What's happening, you guys? It's the Cassius Morris Show. Thanks for tuning in to episode 194 of the podcast with two special guests from the new project Minefield. We have Todd Kearns, of course, known from his solo work and work with Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators, as well as Brandon Fields, who's primarily known for his work with Whiskey A Go Go and his solo work. This was an idea that started for the guys really in quarantine about maybe putting together a couple of songs and it evolved into a beautiful super group rock and roll type collection project, which I think is fascinating. And this was a cool conversation about how they put this record together from a distance while also making sure it was quality material and that it really came together in a cohesive way. So really cool to have a conversation about this project. It's a very unique project, and I encourage everybody to go check it out. You can find Minefield on all social media, but the easiest place to find their music is going to be on Spotify. And while you're over on Spotify, you can also go follow the Cassius Morris Show official playlist. This playlist has over nine hours of music and is comprised of about 50 of my favorites that I wanted to put on here but the rest is all you guys' music suggestions. Anytime I ask for music suggestions online, I go through them and the songs that I think would be a good fit for this eclectic music mix because it's a lot of different genres. I put them on here. So go check that out. I think it's a really great collection of music. And with that, let's get into my podcast with Brandon Fields and Todd Kearns of Minefield. Brandon Fields and Todd Kearns. Gentlemen, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks Good to be here. Us. Good to be here. 100%. Um, so, boy, life has taken a turn since the last time we talked. Todd especially. I mean, it was just over six month, months ago. Life was quite normal. Um, and you guys have started a brand new project. So what can you guys tell me about the new project that you guys have got started here? A brand new project. See what I did? Brand new project. Exactly. Well, he is the founder. <laughs> Brandon, you did found the project, correct? Yeah, uh, and it kind of started off as this whole other monster over the summer. So originally when I reached out to like Todd and Matt and Jeremy, these guys were all going to be doing guest spots on just one or two songs at the most. And then we kind of got the ball rolling on everything and we were having an awesome time and it turned into a 10 song album. So, and then it's all four of us on every track and, it just made sense after we cut a couple of songs just to keep it going the way things were. So, and it definitely seemed to work out for the best. Yeah. It was a funny thing because, um, Jeremy and Matt reached out to me first saying, Hey, uh, you know, what do you think of this thing? And I'm kind of like, and I think initially it was a song or something like that. And it was sort of like, yeah, you know, I'm literally like not doing too much because, you know, there's a pandemic and all that. So, uh, <laughs> So I kind of, uh, and then it sort of spun into another song. I think there was two songs I was going to sing. And then it was like, well, who's playing bass on this? And there was sort of like, well, we're not sure yet. And I'll go, I'll play bass on this. And then it just sort of, like Brandon said, the next thing you know, it's like, well, we got, you know, the, the lineup of these guys is one of the, you know, the best lineups I can imagine. Because I already, I already love Jeremy. I, I played with Matt before. And, uh, and then with the addition of Brandon now, it's sort of like, you know, I, I say like the addition of Brandon, when in fact, Brandon sort of, it's, this whole thing is his fault. <laughs> right, right. He, he's sort of the spearhead of the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. So, so Brandon, when, when you come up with this idea, was it like, okay, I want to do a project called Minefield or was it just, I want to get some songs recorded? Did it even have a name at first? Well, uh, the original plan was that it was just going to be a follow-up to my last solo album that I put out in okay. 2018. And the original plan was I was going to have a bunch of different guests on it because I went into the project thinking, you know, I could do the same old song and dance where you record an album, you go play the shows for it. And, you know, I've built a decent fan base for myself that I've got that follows me around. And I was like, how can I expand my demographic? And what better way to expand your demographic than to jam with a bunch of different musicians? And so then it kind of turned into reaching out to everybody and then kind of got the ball rolling with all of that. So originally it was not going to be called Minefield, but like I said, everything just kind of kept accumulating and kind of a snowball effect to where it turned into a band name, which 
it, it worked out for the best in my opinion. Yeah, well, the record deal and all that stuff sort of changed that whole dynamic as well because it, you know, it was it literally started as Brandon Fields' experience, yeah. uh, <laughs> and we're just going to like, yeah, we're going to sit in, and then it sort of ballooned into this other monster that clearly is, um, you know, putting a name to it and having it as a separate project entirely became kind of like, yeah, that, that makes sense, I think. And it continues right. now. It's not like we're still writing, we're still kind of recording, we're still kind of... It, what seemed like it was going to be finished a while ago, almost, you know, more like an eight song EP has sort of ballooned into a full album. At some hmm. point, there'll, there'll be a new album released. Yeah. Wow, it's interesting. So you guys are really just sort of taking the bull by the horns and just taking life as it came to you during these unexpected times, which is interesting. Todd, was this out of your comfort zone at all um, as a player? Um, or was it sort of more in your comfort zone? Because having talked to you about some of your past projects, it has been a lot of let's just go and it may be spontaneous and there may be a lot of changes. Well, I, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. You know, I'm like sort of, you know, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, as they say. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you sort of, uh, it, I, I'm big on like, you know, when there's a knock at that door, to answer that door, you know what I mean? And sometimes yeah. it's it, it's led me to some pretty wacky places. Uh, it, it, minefield is a pretty wacky place, frankly. <laughs> but- uh, It's gotta be, it's rock and roll. <laughs> exactly, uh, you know, I mean, but uh, you know, especially with stuff like this, when you say comfort zone, it's not like someone was asking me to, uh, you know, parachute or direct a film or something like that. It was kind of like, do you want to sing some songs with some guys that you love and, and that you respect? It's like, of course, you know, especially during all this where it was sort of, um, you know, this was supposed to be like one of the busiest years ever for me and to feel it all kind of, you know, dissipate into like the first couple of weeks. I can't know. I don't know about you guys, but for the first couple of weeks, I was still kind of like, I got to call that person. I got to return that email. I got to, yeah. I got that thing to do. And then I just sort of like had to kind of land on like, no, none of that is anything anymore right now. It so, hadn't kicked in yet. No. Yeah. I was still in my kind of like my, my thing. And then I kind of, you know, and eventually it was sort of like, oh, I've been meaning to watch this show. And boom, you're on the couch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hours go by. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, oh, let's see. Are you still watching when Netflix asks you that? You're yeah. like, hell yeah, I'm still watching. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, I am. Yes. I really am. Yeah. I can't believe that I am either. Netflix, don't <laughs> qu quit judging me. But uh, seriously, then, uh, you know, when the call comes for something like that, it's like, yeah, absolutely. That sounds like fun. Because, you know, on top of all that, you've all seen all the COVID, COVID videos, we call them, where guys are like let's record you know a cover song and whatever and then they film everybody's and so I did a few of those just for fun and everybody's recording at home and whatnot and then this sort of stuff came up and Brandon the initial thing was like I think you said I think home was the first one am I right Brandon yeah home and home. it's funny is, because uh, alone together being the first single was the last song we added into the mix before it became this whole project hmm. that's right so there's really, uh, there really is no order to it. It really is just like, we're putting this out as we see it and as we feel it. There may not be any specific set order. Well, uh, we've got it lined out for the singles that are going to be coming out. Uh, right. So we've, we've planned for those. Uh, as far as like Todd was saying, we did end up adding two or three extra songs after mm -hmm. we thought the album was going to be done. And some of that had to do with, uh, you know, COVID scheduling right now. We've all we might have anticipated things were going to go back to normal a little sooner than they are. So we didn't necessarily prepare to have as much more free time as we did. And since we ended up having some more time, it would fit into all of our schedules to work on some more material together. So that's yeah. kind of where the rest of that came from. Uh, but the singles, we've definitely got uh, those planned out. We know which ones we're releasing when, but uh, like at the beginning, when Todd was first brought into the mix, yeah, it was uh, it was one song, and then it turned into two songs, and then three songs, and then after the third song was when we were like, all right, let's let's just cut this whole album. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 also weird too because in this day and age, with the COVID and with just the music industry in general, it's sort of like um, you know, it's it's weird because I. I'm older than you guys and I sort of came up from in a world where you record 10 to 12, 13 songs, you put them on a CD and you release them. It is an album, you know, but um, you know, in this day and age, it's sort of like, 
well, we probably could just release singles until we're blue in the face, really. And then just, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's sort of a wacky, wacky time. But, uh, you know, it will come out as a full CD. But it's uh, it started as like the song Home. Brandon sends over some music and says, what do you think about putting something on this? And I came up with some stuff and we were excited about that. Then the next song, the next song. And, and, uh, and you know, and we basically recorded everything. We have other people um, sitting in on the record as well. Yeah. And and then the writing and the uh, and the recording still is still proceeding even as we uh, well, we're basically finishing it up now, I guess. Uh, you'd have to ask my boss, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've got uh, we've got one or two tracks left that we're finishing up right now. Uh, nice. One original and we're actually uh, in the process of recording a Kiss cover as well, which is going to be the fourth single. So cool. Pretty, pretty excited about that. That'll yeah. be a nice little surprise for the Kiss fans, as we know, there's tons of them listening, of course. So when you guys typically do your music, let's say pre-COVID, are you guys very used to doing things? Because I, I would assume this record was done remotely. Is that fair to assume you guys are all in your yeah. own spots? So yeah. are you guys used to that? Or is that something that's sort of newer for you guys? Um, I can't speak for Brandon, but uh, yeah. you know, it, it has become more normal. I mean, the fact mm -hmm. that Brandon and I have never physically been in the same room together is a surreal thing. One time, one time we were in the same room. But yeah. you were on stage and I was way up in the nose. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> that, that sort of counts, I guess, yeah. I guess. But it is one of those things where, um, you know, it's like as a songwriter, like basically Brandon and I are a songwriting team within this thing. And it's like, it's very interesting to think, because that's sort of an interesting when you, when you have somebody presenting you music and you kind of, you come up with uh, lyrics and melody and you just, you know, mash them together and that becomes the... So you yeah. can do that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's become more the norm in, in its own way, this idea of doing things because of the technology now. You can sort of have, uh, you know, like, like guys like, I've always wanted to get Michael Monroe from Hanoi Rocks to play saxophone on something. And I'm, I'm holding right. on to that. Like, I was like, <laughs> he's in Finland, but he's going to play on the record. You know what I mean? Well, it's and, more and tangible it, now. It's true. It, it is. And, that's, and that's, so when you say that, I really haven't done a lot of it myself, but in doing it with the guys, uh, with Minefield, it really sort of opened my mind to the possibilities of just of doing that, yeah. How about you, Brandon? Uh, this has become a newer experience for me as far as the remote recording goes, and a lot of that has to do with the current global situation. Uh, for me, really, in the past, uh, a lot of actual being in the studio with the whole band, uh, a lot of live recording uh, to where we're all jamming at the same time, not where we're each going into the studio at separate times to do our parts. So that's something I've always really enjoyed is that that live aspect of being in the studio. I think that's a really authentic sound, but I think this album is kind of a testament to how good each of us are as personal musicians that we can kind of recreate that authentic feeling, even though we're doing it remotely. 100%. Yeah. It would be a bit of a fallacy to think that, I mean, because, you know, in reality with Slash, uh, the biggest thing that we always try to accomplish is as much of a live vibe as possible. Yeah. And, and sometimes that is fabricated in that, you know, sometimes there are times that you're able to catch everything off the floor and everything went 100% great and everybody played through the parts great. And then other times it just doesn't quite go down that way. And some things are kept live and other things are replaced. And, and often vocals in general are, are after the fact. So so there is something to be said about um, you know recording as a group, but at the same time, often the standard to record the drums, then the bass and the guitars, you know, everything is in, in usually things are done fairly separately. And uh, so whether we were all in the same studio in Nashville doing it piece by piece, or whether we're like literally in four different places <laughs> doing it piece by piece, it really sort of it's essentially the same idea and I think if it sounded um, I suppose inauthentic or if it sounded weird we would be the first people to really bring that up but you yeah. know I, I just think all these guys are, are, are pros and, and I'm a big fan of all of their playing and, and I just think it really when you mix that all together in the goulash it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah we have to give a uh, shout out to our producer Anthony Fox as well because yeah his, his mixes are slamming he, he does a really good job of you know, enhancing our performances because, you know, that that part of the process is just as important, if not more important than the recording process. Because so you can important. go in there and kill a take, but, you know, 
Yeah. Somebody's not pressing the right buttons and all that stuff. It's, it's, it drastically changes how everything's going to sound. And that's something that uh, I kind of definitely really underappreciated, but didn't understand until the last couple of years getting more involved in the actual recording process is how big of a difference that can make. You can take the exact same recordings and have two different producers and it'll sound like it's recorded at different studios, different times. Wow. And I think that's a good testament to how well Anthony does with what he's doing, which he just did Ace Fraley's Origins Volume Two. So that's mm -hmm. another great record. So we, yeah, we know he's well got it. We's got he's got it in his repertoire to pump out some really good stuff. So yeah, he's amazing. Really comfortable working with him and uh a lot of the thanks for how authentic and everything sounds has to be given to him as well. Awesome. Yeah, wow. he's the best. That's incredible. And and when you really think about what you're explaining and break it down, I mean, you can have producers, like you said, record a band all in the same room, potentially even live all at once. And the, the two producers can come in and make it sound completely different. Now, yeah. imagining it with each musician actually being in different rooms and then to still make it sound fantastic. That's a huge task. I mean, so he deserves major props. I mean, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder how he even does it so well. I mean, <laughs> one of the best. It is, yeah. interesting. it is an interesting thing to consider because, you know, there are so many different ways to make records and, and really, you know, like if each of us brings like, uh, I don't know, like a different ingredient to put into the stew, it's his job to finalize that stew and, and they could just as easily ruin it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. When you leave that much sort of responsibility on them. So you really have to trust the guy in the kitchen, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. And uh, so, you know, you could make, we could make a record all four of us together in Nashville or whatever with the wrong guy and it'll sound terrible, or we could do it completely separately with Anthony Fox and it turns out awesome. So it's, you know, we're just very lucky to have him really at the helm to make this thing uh, as great as it's been sounding. Yeah, a hundred percent. Now, let me ask you guys this, and maybe since it's a rather new project, it may be a little early to be able to tell. Um, is it, somewhat more difficult to make sort of to have everybody agree when there's so many different moving parts that have to agree for example when there's somebody who's the head of the band it may be easier for decisions to be made but as this is described it's more of a musical collective than a solo project or a band is there anything that sort of makes it a little more difficult to make decisions or is it not like that I would say that we're all pretty level-headed. So, I mean, we all trust each other's judgment. So we're not worried about somebody else's performance, you know, as yeah. some situations in bands some of us have been in before where, you know, it can be a little chaotic trying to put a record together. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, with all of us just being the level of professionals that we are, is taking this as seriously as we can and just being around. Obviously, these guys have been around a lot longer than I have. But I think when you take all that into account, it kind of makes for an easy process because we're all we're all easygoing guys for the most part. You know, there's no real big egos among us. So and we all trust each other. And I think that's a big part. Well, and the fact that it started as Brandon's project, you know, it's sort of like I'm a big um you know, I'm a big advocate of, of, of helping, you know, um, artists and musicians if they have a, a, a plan in mind or they've got a vision in mind. And that vision's the best word for it. You kind of go, okay, so when Brandon sends me over the music, I think we speak as much as we are, you know, from a different generation, we do speak the very, very much the same language, uh, mm -hmm. mostly Klingon, which is strange. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> No, it's, it's, you know, so he, I, I know exactly where he's going when he sends me the riffs and I hear the stuff. I go, oh, okay, cool. Because, you know, because I'm sort of one of those guys that can flow in and out of like hard rock and I, and I have a lot of pop friends and, and uh, you know, and more just straight up rock and roll and punk rock kind of, kind of thing. And, and I really enjoy living because I'm one of those people I can see all the, all the similarities within all of those worlds, you know. Yeah. And when Brandon sort of, you know, sends me his, his vision as sort of like straight up, you know, rock, it's kind of like, here we go. And I get to put on that hat. And I love putting on that hat where you don't have to overthink it and you're not sort of stroking your beard about like, how, how are the people in, uh, you know, uh, Australian radio going to feel about this song? You're kind of like, mm. it doesn't matter. You're just going to make the music you want to make. And you, you, and I, that's sort of the thing I've learned over the years is you just, you really can't second guess things and nine times out of ten if you're spending a whole bunch of time thinking about what's hip right now by the time you get your shit together 
that ain't hip anymore, you know? So exactly. So you, so you kind of have to keep doing your, just keep your eye on the ball. And it's a very, the group of guys all come from kiss and guns and roses and all that kind of stuff. And we just really sort of cooked up, you know, music that's very much in that realm, I think. And it, and it yeah. really makes for a, uh, you know, but again, I do believe Brandon sort of, we, we've all, we sort of acquiesced to his project and let him, carry the reins i'm sure if he you know presented something we weren't into or didn't feel it would just kind of <laughs> it would just kind of go away you know yeah sure just naturally it would it would it wouldn't work out but it, you yeah, guys seem very excited about it it wouldn't be a big like oh this is terrible it would just be kind of right. but that's generally the way i think things generally work at least in my world where it's kind of like if something doesn't catch on it just kind of goes away we haven't really had that problem everything is sort of every little seed that's planted has turned into something yeah, we've uh, been pretty good as far as even stripping it down to the music. Uh, everything's kind of worked really well. And like that all kind of goes back to us just being good at what we do and trusting each other. And, you know, uh, as far as like if anything came up to where we weren't overly enthusiastic about it, I think it would be kind of a different situation because by the time we would get to that point to where we have a finished song, there would have had it would have already had input from all four of us. So there's not yeah. really, there's not really too much material that on, that's on the album that was, you know, 100% done except for one of the tracks that I sing. Uh, everything was done before coming into it, but as far as everything else go, everybody got pretty much input on everything. So it, nice. it never really would have been to the point where something would have came out completely done and these guys wouldn't have heard it, you know, until that that time and place. So everybody it's all kind of got their effort. own input. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys all get to get to sort of be involved in that piece, and I think it's incredible. You know, I sort of see a level of freedom in what you guys are doing because you're all in your own environments. You get to have all the proper settings. You have a trusted producer. You trust each other too, because as I mean, you guys are true professionals at what you do, um, and it can be hard to come by. I think when you find such a good group where everybody shares that in common, you know, from just having interviewed people in bands, that's, that's a big pet peeve of a lot of musicians. So yeah, I think what you guys are doing is fantastic. It sounds fantastic. Um, and you guys have a new single. Is there anything you can tell us about the single that's going to be coming out? Well, it's a, uh, it's, it's more laid back than the first one, at least initially. It's sort of, it's a lot, well, we keep, ref it's very epic. Like it has elements of Queen in there. And, and uh, I mean, I, I always love when you do to throw that around. Like, yeah, we sound exactly <laughs> like Queen. Like, I, I'm pretty much Freddie Mercury, really. I can say it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's still true. <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, it really is. It's funny because it, you know, what started off as, you know, this, this musical bit that, that, uh, that Brandon was playing and it had a natural sort of the chorus, you know, lifts and then it goes back down. And so it has a lot of those kind of elements to it. And I think it's really it's a, it's a funny because I, I was thinking about it not that long ago. I went through a whole period of listening to like, like I, I've always sort of like, when it comes to lyrics, I've always really tried to be really, not tried, but I'm, you know, I, I consider myself, a, you know, a reasonably well-read guy. I always want to make sure mm -hmm. I have something to say. And then I went through a whole phase of listening to like Bad Company and bands like that. And, and just like the straight rock and rollness of it. And the right. kind of like, I mean, there's things that are being said, obviously, but there's, you know, but there's a very sort of, sometimes it's just the directness of it, you know, where you're not kind of like, you know, where it's like being colorful and is he talking Meat about potatoes this? potatoes rock. Yeah, exactly. And I think that with, with a lot of the songs on this, I sort of, sort of took the, took the thinking cap off in a, in a funny way. Like, I don't mean to be like, I didn't dumb it down, but I just, <laughs> right. I just thought like, I just thought like, there's Let nothing it be wrong. More natural. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with just being really sort of as, you know, as, as direct as, if, as feels comfortable or feels natural. And, and home is one of those songs that it's a road song. I can only say that, you know, it's about, you know, trying to maintain relationships with, it could be, a, it could be a girl or, 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 or your family even, you know, it's just like the whole idea of, um, like the one line in there says something about uh, when you ask me where you're going to be, I never know, you know, because it's really yeah. kind of like, it's really, you know, it's different now with cell phones and, and this, but there was a time where you'd go to Europe and you'd be like, I have no idea how I'm supposed to call <laughs> my <laughs> girlfriend or whatever. And it's like, I don't even know what time it is. And, you know, you're calling, it's like 3am and it's Seriously. just sort of like, 
but I, I, this has changed a lot of it, but it's still the same thing. It's like physically, it's the same thing as having, you know, connections like this. We, we've all, we all know each other, but we don't, we never get to hang out in person. And that's, right. again, it's, it has a similar experience because alone together is sort of inspired by what we're going through. This kind right. of thing, again, where we're alone, like I'm literally in this room alone, but we're together, you know, that whole right. experience of, and, and, and home, I think probably plays into that as well, where it's kind of like, where I, I can't believe how, you know, when I really take a step back and think about it, how much your direct experience just filters into the music just really simply. And I think that, yeah. you know, it might've been, a, might've been a bit about the road and it might've been actually like just this separation from, I haven't seen my family and it'll be a year at Christmas time. You know what I mean? Wow. That's incredible. And yeah, that's, that's definitely something that especially musicians on, on any level can totally relate to. And, and anybody who's touring in general, I mean, that separation, that's a crazy thing. It sort of makes me think of uh, like a rock and roll version of Beth or something like that. Yeah, it's a little bit of that kind of like on a steel horse I ride. Kind of, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. We've seen a million faces. We rocked them all. You know. Exactly. It, it's funny because I often think about that with my with my civilian friends, you know, like like normal people, if you want to call mm -hmm. them. Um, I always kind of giggle. Like I, I, I know they all kind of go like, wow, dude, you got to go and do this and go do that. But they wouldn't trade places with me in a second because they'd be like, uh, no, no, I I got bowling on Wednesday and right. a barbecue on Sunday. And, yeah. You know, it's just like, it's just the idea of like, you're going to do what? You're going to get on a plane and go over there and then live on a bus like a gypsy. And it's not yeah. for everybody. It's you're not going to come home for like two or three months. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, seriously. I mean, sacrifice, yeah. I, I try to tell people like sacrifice doesn't mean doing more things you like. It means doing less things you like. Like it's not a, a pleasant thing to sacrifice. So I, I think a lot of people don't understand that. And they have like a rosy eyed view of, of what this, you know, you guys' life really is. Um, but it is fascinating. And, and I appreciate you guys taking your real life experiences and putting it in this music. I think it's a really good product. So where can everybody find Minefield and, and everything you guys are doing? Well, uh, we've got the Minefield Facebook page, facebook.com slash Minefield USA. Uh, the Instagram, Minefield USA for the most part on that and Twitter as well. And, uh, Golden Robot, any of their social media pages, you can see the shirt I'm representing. Uh, there you Golden go. Robot Records is who we are signed to and who all the music is being released through. And got to give thanks to them as well because they're doing an awesome job taking care of us. And they've, really they've got an awesome repertoire of bands that are signed to them. So, I mean, we're in good company. Some of my favorite bands are signed to Golden Robot, like King's X. Yeah. And so yeah. there's... They're, they definitely know what they're doing, and it, there was a, definitely a sense of comfortability from the first time we talked that kind of helped catapult all of this stuff. And it all, it all plays into a very equally important part of the whole, entire process. You take away one part of it, and this whole thing is completely different, and it could be going in a completely different direction. So, you know, yeah. it just makes you really appreciate every single moving part to this process. Absolutely. I love that. Todd, you're on social media as well? Yeah, I am Todd Kearns pretty much everywhere. Uh, Todd Dammit Kearns on Twitter. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm easy to find. Todd, ToddKearns.com. MySpace. MySpace. Do, do you have a personal <laughs> one as well, Brandon? <laughs> yeah, uh, Brandon Fields Music on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Brandon Fields underscore official, and then Twitter is official B Fields. So, you can go keep up with everything on there. Awesome. Gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank yeah, you, Cassius. Thank you, sir. And there you have it. My exclusive podcast with Brandon Fields and Todd Kearns of Minefield. Really interesting conversation. You know, I love music. I love hearing about the process of how the music is made. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you're tuned in, be it YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio. Make sure to click that follow or subscribe button and leave a rating slash review if possible, be it liking the video, commenting on the video, leaving a rating on Spotify or iTunes. I always want to know what you guys think of the content that's coming out. Follow me on Twitter at Cassius Morris and Cassius Morris underscore. The podcast is on all social media at Cassius Show. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. 
And of course, make sure to check out our guests at all the links that they just mentioned. Minefield is on Spotify. They're on Facebook. And also make sure to go check out the guys on their personal pages. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, this is Cassius Morris saying, Rock on.